two and a half years of YouTube and analytics have told me this, like this is a fact. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Is luxury YouTube dying or dead? This is a topic of conversation that has been circulating around the luxury YouTube space for quite a while now. I believe that Romina Rose May made a video about it back in November, and I actually think that she tagged me in it to respond to her or respond to the, the topic at hand. So I'm sorry that I'm just getting into it now, Romina. A lot of stuff has been going on, but a lot of people have been talking about this topic. Kayla Smell made an excellent video about it. Jesse Style made a great video about it. I'll tag all of them and link their videos down below for you. And I just I wanted to add my two cents because a couple of people have been asking me about it and also asking me about where the future of my channel specifically is. And I wanted to talk about that kind of in regards to how my channel is doing in the, the luxury YouTube space. Now, I am a very small channel. I'm a micro influencer. If you want to call me either an influencer or anything like that, which I don't really consider myself an influencer because then you know, it's, it's this topic for kind of a different sphere of people that I don't think that I have achieved yet or will ever achieve. I don't know, that's a tangent, never mind. But in terms of my subscriber base, I have about 8,000 subscribers, eight and a half thousand now, and that is a very small number for somebody active in the YouTube community. Now, I'm not saying that I am mad about my number because I'm more than 5,000 people, I'm more than 200 people. Like, I am very grateful and happy that people have wanted to subscribe to my channel and have been watching my videos for the two and a half years that I've been making them. Like that's super cool. I've grown steadily over the last two and a half years since I started in August of 2020. That being said, my growth has definitely slowed down a significant amount in the last couple of months, especially in, in April when I'm making this video in April of 2023, my subscriber count is way, way down and my views are also way, way down. Normally I average about 40,000, 45,000, sometimes 50,000 views a month. Uh, that's pretty high for me. 50,000 is pretty high for me, but around like 38 to 45, something like that. And I generally gain about 200 to 300 subscribers a month. And that's pretty slow and steady, but slow and steady does run the race. I have been steadily climbing in subscriber count and view count sort of over the last several years. However, in April of 2023, my subscriber count as of filming this video is about half of what I normally make. I usually am about 200 subscribers, 300 subscribers a month, and now I'm around 100 and something, like not on the high end of 100 and something, on the low end of 100 and something, and my views are also way down. While some of my videos, especially my price increase videos, get sometimes like 15,000 views. I think my Louis Vuitton one got something like 15 or 16,000 views. Like that was a lot of views for that video. My normal videos get maybe be in the upper 4,000 range, low 2,000 range. I usually break a thousand views for a video in the first week, but I don't usually make more than two or 3,000 views on a video, which is considering the subscriber to view ratio kind of low. And also keeping in mind that not all of the people that watch me are subscribers. You're talking about maybe a 10th of my actual subscriber base watching my videos regularly. Now, again, I'm not complaining about the amount of views I have. This isn't a video going like poor me, why am I not growing? What, what's going on? Why boohoo? Because I'm not doing that. I hope that you can tell from my demeanor that I'm not like upset necessarily. This is sort of a factual discussion about what is actually going on in my specific channel in the luxury YouTube space. But the thing is, is that I also understand why my view count has dipped. My subscriber count being lower and my view count being lower directly relates to the fact that I have been putting out fewer videos. In the past, I was putting out two to three videos a week, and that was a lot for me. It was kind of hard work, honestly. It was a lot of work, and I actually had to take a hiatus in January and February because YouTube was taking up too much of my time and too much of my energy, and it was too much, and I needed to stop. And so since then, my view count and my subscriber count has dwindled because I'm not putting out as many videos. I think I put out something like four videos in March, three or four videos in March. I did put out uh, about seven videos in April, I think eight if you're counting this one and one that I'm gonna be putting out soon, like eight, eight videos in April, but that is still down from the two to three videos I was putting out a week. And that really does impact, obviously, your view count, but it also impacts your subscriber count because the fewer videos that you're putting out into the ether, the fewer people are going to stumble across them and watch them, the fewer people are going to subscribe, and also the fewer videos that you put out 
the fewer videos that the YouTube algorithm is going to recommend to other people. Looking at my analytics on YouTube, 71% of my viewership is from people who are not subscribed to me. So if you think about it, if I have a video with 2,000 views on it, 70% of those views are not even to people who have subscribed to me. So those 8,000 subscribers don't watch. And that is, again, something that is just part of the, the how YouTube works. People aren't going to click on every video. People aren't going to click on videos that don't interest them. Even if they like the creator, they might not like the topic or they might not care. I just posted a Chanel unboxing, for instance, and people seem to be over Chanel. And so less people watch that video than they might have watched a year ago or two years ago. And that's just kind of how things are right now. Chanel is sort of out of fashion a little bit, out of trend. And so people aren't clicking on videos that feature Chanel in them, which is just sort of how YouTube works, how also fashion works, it's cyclical. There are peaks and valleys for different brands, for different spotlights. And so if I'm posting a lot of Chanel content, which I do because I do like Chanel, I do buy Chanel, I talk about Chanel, then less people are going to be watching those videos. And the way that YouTube algorithm works is that if fewer people click on your videos, it starts showing your video to fewer people. So less people will actually get a chance to see it and discover it in their feed or in their browsing, you know, just going around on the YouTube business line. And so putting out fewer videos directly impacts how many people watch them, but also putting out videos that have content that some people don't care about directly impacts how many people watch them and how many people YouTube puts it in front of. And I'm saying this as a fact because that's how YouTube works. It's how the algorithm works. That's how viewership works. But it is also true that there's not a lot about it that I personally can change right now. Yes, I can try to up my videos again right now, but trying to put out three videos a week was really, really hard for me. It just, it didn't work with my schedule didn't work with my life and so I physically couldn't do it and even putting out two videos a week is also kind of tough some of my videos are just talky like this one and that is fairly easy to, to you know film and edit and put out price increase videos I find out the information I generally make it same day I you know I try to do that as soon as possible if you're interested in price increase videos by the way do feel free to subscribe to this channel to watch upcoming price increase videos as I find out the information I share that as soon as possible but the people who watch my price increase videos generally only watch my price increase videos for instance and so if I put out a video about an unboxing they might not watch it if I put out a video about an opinion they might not watch it best bags for spring people might not watch it. Fashion content, people might not watch it. I have figured out over the two and a half years that I've been doing YouTube that for me personally, most of the things that people watch are the price increase videos, which obviously I can only make a price increase video when a price increase is going to happen. I don't make videos based on sensationalized rumors. So like, unless I have confirmation from multiple sources, I'm not making a video about it because why would I do that? You come to me as a reliable source. So that's one thing that people watch them, but those are not like regular videos that I can put out. The other thing that people watch me for is educational content. Like a lot of my review videos have done pretty well. Um, some of my rehab videos have done pretty well, like my how to's, those do pretty well. And so those are the ones that continually get views. But what I have also found is that my videos where I am talking as a person to person, like my personality shines through over like educational content or over a price increase or something. Something that's more me, like talking about a fashion show that I really like, or even an unboxing, or showcasing like some fashions that I think are really cool. Those videos don't do very well. And I'm not saying this for sympathy. I'm really, really not. This is literally something that I have observed over two and a half years of doing YouTube. The videos that focus on my personality over my facts don't do as well. The videos where I'm talking about something that is interesting or important to me don't do as well. My personality is not what people click my videos for. And that's just sort of how it is for me. And it's different for different people. For instance, my friend Caleb Snell, he's got a great personality. He's very personable. People click him for him. And I think that his videos are going to skyrocket soon because people like him for who he is. And so it kind of almost doesn't matter what videos he's making because people will watch anything. Same thing, you know, with uh, Jessie Style. Now she makes a lot of videos that are just kind of like her opinion, her talking at the camera. And so her videos do very, very well. She gets a lot of views on these videos because people are watching for her. Super Jacob also, like you probably know of Super Jacob if you're in the luxury YouTube space. His videos are very personable. He's very about himself. And so videos where he's talking about kind of anything people will watch. He's a great storyteller, but that's what people tune in for. 
And it's very different to try to exist in a space, especially a niche space like Luxury YouTube. Like Luxury YouTube is a very, very small niche and trying to exist in a space where your personality is not why people click makes it difficult to come up with more videos to do. Like, as I said, I can't make a price increase video every day or every week because there aren't them. I can't make videos about like unboxings because it's, you know, I love to do unboxings when I have a thing to unbox, but that's not something I do regularly. And unboxing videos do pretty well, but like that's not something I do all the time. Educational videos are fun. I really enjoy them. I like talking to you. I like presenting information. I really do. I have a video coming out soon about a vintage Chanel buying guide that I'm really, really proud of. I think I did a good job and I think it's a really good video to use as reference. And I'm hoping that the video does pretty well. I don't know if it's going to, but I hope it really does but those videos are harder. They take more effort. They take a lot of pictures. They take a lot of research. They take a lot of sitting down and planning. I usually script my video before I film it. I have to actually do the filming. Putting it all together takes time. Those generally take a lot of editing too because I want to make sure that I'm presenting my information as well as I possibly can. So there's a lot that goes into the more educational how-to videos as opposed to the ones where you know can turn on a camera and just sort of talk at it kind of like this one. I don't expect a lot of people to watch this video because I'm just talking at a camera and people don't necessarily care about my opinion as opposed to caring about in what information I can impart to them, like what I can tell and teach about. And so all that comes together with my channel kind of stagnating. It hasn't really grown in the last couple of months or the last few months, probably since I took my hiatus. And so I'm not giving up YouTube. That's not what this video is about. I'm not saying that I'm quitting because I'm not growing anymore. Like. No, I, I enjoy it very much. I like talking about these things with you. I like sharing this stuff. I love the comments. And so I like the community that YouTube allows me to be a part of. But I do admit that sometimes it gets frustrating not seeing any growth because it's it's fun to see yourself grow. It really is. It's, it's fun to like grow bigger as you put in more effort. And so it can be sometimes a little bit frustrating to stagnate essentially because of things that I know I have chosen myself and I'm not changing. Because really when it comes down to it, the people who are getting views are the people who know how to sell themselves and their personality and are making interesting content and are making that content frequently. Like those are the people that are growing right now and are doing really well. There's a lot of smaller creators that are getting bigger and they're getting bigger faster because they hit all those three things. And since I'm not selling a personality very much, like. You know, it's, it's, it's just true. Two and a half years of YouTube and analytics have told me this, like this is a fact, that's true. So I'm, I'm not selling personality. I can't up my frequency because two videos, three videos a week is just too hard to do regularly for me right now. And I don't know if that'll change in the future, but right now it's just kind of not possible. And in terms of topics of conversation, again, it comes down to like, what do I talk about? I don't know. I think the people who are talking about luxury to dying are kind of the people who are watching themselves stagnate much in the way that I am. And I think that that is partially because of the same reasons that I have talked about before, which is that either something about them is not interesting more people, like people aren't subscribing because something about them is just not drawing in new subscribers or new views. They haven't been able to upload very frequently or regularly. And it also is true that like luxury YouTube has been around for a really long time and there's a lot of stuff that already exists in this space. And so if you don't have anything necessarily new to offer, maybe you're not talking about different brands, maybe you're not talking about new fashions, maybe you're not talking about current topics, people might not be interested in watching your content anymore. And stuff that was popular uh, a couple of years ago, you know, or, or even five or 10 years ago, we've seen a lot of hauls and people are tired of them. We've seen a lot of unboxings and people are watching them less. We've also seen like a lot of comparison videos in the past, a lot of review videos in the past. And that means that there are a lot of them that already exist. Now, I'm not saying that a review video from the present day isn't a good thing and I will continue to make them as I acquire items to review. Like my Recto Verso review has done pretty well. Um, my Mini Lou camera bag review has also done pretty well over the last few months since it came out. I'll link those videos for you as well in the cards and down below because if you're interested in watching them. But if you're not interested in those items, why would you watch a review on them? Those reviews are only for people who are kind of interested in learning more about those pieces. And so if you don't care about the Mini Lou camera bag, why would you watch a review on it? You know, that, that, that just is how it is. And so there are a lot of reviews that already exist. So if you're interested in the Mini Lou camera bag, you might watch somebody else's video, or you might not be interested in watching a new video because there's already so many out there. 
I do think that new creators should be making review videos because I think that there's something very important about relevancy and current relevancy because it's very true that the mini Lou camera bag, for instance, I'm gonna just talk about this because this is my example now, I decided. It's true that the mini Lou camera bag is now much more expensive than it was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So people who reviewed the mini Lou camera bag three years ago when it was under a thousand dollars and saying how much it was worth it, their opinions kind of are less relevant than someone who's reviewing it in 2023 when the mini camera bag is $1,700. Like it's a very big difference. So you might wanna pay more attention to somebody saying, oh yes, it's worth it at 1,700 versus someone who says it's worth it under a grand. Those are very different opinions. So I think that review videos still have their place. And I think that new review videos still have their place, but in general, and I know this video is all over the place. This is kind of what I mean about like turning on the camera and talking. I don't know how well this is going to go over, but I'm trying my best in terms of is luxury YouTube dying? I don't think it is. I think it is changing, but I think that for some creators, it is getting more and more frustrating. And if something starts to frustrate you when it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be like a fun hobby, then you want to do it less. Or for people who are doing it for money, you know, for a lot of people on YouTube, YouTube is a veritable side business or real business. And if they're no longer getting the views that they expect to for their income, then they're not going to keep doing it. They're going to pursue something else. Bigger YouTubers are leaving YouTube in part because the money isn't there for them anymore. They can earn more money off of TikTok or Instagram or sponsorships from other places. And that's also part of how it goes. Those people leave, other people are going to come. They're gonna rise up. And speaking as somebody who does YouTube as a fun hobby, I do earn a little bit of income from YouTube. I am monetized and I get ad revenue. In fact, I made a video a while back about how my ad revenue completely breaks down. Like it's full transparency. So I'll link that video for YouTube. I think it's a good one. It's another one of my educational videos. And as, as I said, I really like making those. So I'll link that video for you. But it's not a lot. I do YouTube because it's a fun hobby that I enjoy. And when YouTube stops being enjoyable, I'm going to stop. I took a hiatus because I needed to, because it wasn't enjoyable at that time. And if that happens again, I will leave again. I don't know if I will ever be able to leave for good, maybe one day, probably. But right now I don't have any plans to leave. It's just also true that seeing my numbers stagnate is sort of disheartening sometimes because if nobody watches your content, why are you making the content? You know, that's what it comes down to for me. I make videos to share and to talk to other people and connect with other people. So if nobody's watching the videos then the videos are kind of pointless, like I write, if no one's reading my books, I need to be writing different books or I need to be switching up what I do. Like, it's just, that's the nature of the game. In conclusion, I'm not going anywhere, but I did wanna just make a video about kind of my perspective on things in terms of this luxury YouTube niche and how it is definitely something that has been directly affecting me in terms of just like my numbers being way down. And sometimes looking at those numbers and going like, well, okay, you know, if no one's watching your videos, why are you still making them? which means that I'm making less videos, which means that less people are watching the videos because less videos are being suggested and the YouTube algorithm is just like, it's all connected. It's just a catch 22 of if you don't make the content, people won't watch it. But if people aren't gonna watch it, why do you make the content? I'd love to hear your perspective on this topic, especially if you're just a YouTube consumer as opposed to a YouTube creator. But if you also are a YouTube creator, I'd love to hear how things have been affecting you. The people that I talked about already in this video, I will link their channels and the videos I mentioned down below for you. So you can also check those out. And also I do really mean it when I say that if you have any videos that you'd like to see from me, please do leave your suggestions in the comments because I would love to make more videos that people want to watch. In fact, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. If you leave a suggestion down below, like feel free to read the comments and see what other people have suggested and like thumb up the comments that you like, thumb up the suggestions that you like, and then I'll make a poll of like the top four or five suggestions and then you can kind of vote on the next one. We'll make it interactive. I think that might be fun. Anyway, I think that's the end of my very long and kind of rambly video. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.